thank you uh, the chair and uh, the co-chair for this opportunity yesterday when um, uh, in the first uh, towards the be beginning of the or end of the first plenary i made a statement that uh, we may not require uh, most of the hydroelectric projects being planned in the country and um, i think that that seemed to have raised the um, uh, the antenna of many people many people talked to me after that and asked me almost they asked me uh, unbelievingly how it just can be true but let me explain uh, uh, that uh, at the same time i would like to uh, request this audience uh, this august audience to consider water in a holistic sense of course we are uh, river is very very important there is absolutely no doubt about that but as long as we are not looking uh, at uh, the impacts on river from various sectoral approach for example how agriculture industry power and other areas are impacting river and water masses as a whole i, I have a modest opinion uh, submission that we may not be able to reach the objective what we are trying to do so that is necessary so i would like to take few minutes as to how power sector alone is uh, impacting it is not just hydroelectric dams which are which we are uh, we should be concerned about it is other two conventional technology areas like coal power plants and also the nuclear power plants these two power plants coal and nuclear power plants they require tremendous amount of fresh water uh, for running their uh, power plants coal and the nuclear for various reasons cooling is a major issue but in case of coal we require uh, coal for uh, steam generation also but nuclear power plants also require tremendous amount of fresh water they they are all of them are not consumptive in nature they will pass through the power plant and go back to the river or the resource but the uh, the outlet water is not of the it is to far far removed from the quality of the inlet water especially in case of nuclear power plant there are very concerned that the outlet water may also have radioactive elements to a small extent in that and we know from coal power plant the in, in both the cases the temperature of the water that is let back to the river after the usage in the power plant is certainly higher than what the inlet temperature was there are many occasions where outlet temperature of the water ha has been so high uh, more, much more than the norms that the aquaculture in the rivers or the water streams have been killed Uh, have decimated in many parts of the world it's happening in india also yesterday by in one of the groups uh, dr bharat junjunwala was making a presentation as to how the number of barrages being planned on river ganga from allahabad downstream up to faraka they may be uh, mostly meant for bringing imported coal along the river upstream what it, if that is true really I, it, it appears to me that it is true a large number of coal power projects can be imagined on the either banks of the river ganga you know that is almost the end of the river we can say the pollution level is so high from these coal power plants consumptive use coal pollution and all that they put together they will certainly would have huge harms now coming back to the hydropower in classical hydropower the hydropower the quantity of hydropower required uh, to thal thermal when we were studying as a part of engineering was Uh, 40% to 60%, 40% hydro and 60% uh, thermal. That's no more true nowadays because countries like France or Gulf countries uh, they don't have very much of hydro power plant at all. They are managing the whole system very well with available thermal sources like nuclear or coal. So the hydro power plant requiring large quantities in order to support is not no more supported anyway. Now in a hydro power plant there is another issue we have to be extremely worried about. the hydro potential total hydro potential in the country by central electricity authority and other agencies has been estimated to be 152000 megawatts now at 2006 and even now the total hydro uh, power capacity is around 35000 megawatt and the integrated energy policy the planning commission has suggested that that capacity has to be fully utilized by 2031 32 that means taking the capacity from our 32000 megawatts to 152000 megawatts let's imagine already we know the hydro power plants have such a huge impact on our society now if it is to be increased from 135000 to 152000 megawatt and most of them are not very efficient power plant i was talking to mr ravi about the uh, annual load factor these uh, the 
uh, Energy uh, Planning Commission itself has mentioned the average annual load factor of these proposed plants cannot be much higher. It will be in the range of around 25 to 30 percent. What it means is we are going to build a huge amount of coal, uh, hydropower plants at huge cost to the society to be enabled to run that officially for only around 25 to 30 percent of the time of the year. Is it really required? The second thing, whether we require really hydropower plant from the security of electricity. This is what government agencies and international agencies who are advocacy groups on hydro are arguing. Why do we require hydro? They say it's cheap, it's clean. It is really not so clean if you take all the pollution impact of that either directly during the operation or subsequent to the operation are concerned. We have been having a lot of discussion. One of the issues that has been conveniently ignored or hidden is the global warming impact of uh, uh, dams. The dams as such in, in uh, the extreme latitudes are not such an issue. But in tropical areas, there have been many reports saying that the amount of vegetation that's getting submerged in tropical dams is causing huge amount of methane emission. And methane, as we all know, has uh, uh, the potential uh, to be a greenhouse gas emission ranging from 25 to about 50 times more than that of carbon dioxide. So yeah, methane emission is a major issue. So this, is, this has been uh, not spoken in loud terms by the advocacy groups on hydro, but it is true. It is, there have been any number of uh, uh, studies on that. So that is something we are forgetting. The next question is, since we, ha we very clearly know that the dams across rivers, whether it's run of the river, run of the river, we can come back to that, run of the river is a, it's a misnomer. It is completely the agencies are trying to hoodwink people by saying that even dam-based power plants can be run of the rivers. There, there is no need for, if we, if we really look at the terminology, the definition of uh, run of the river, what it's supposed to mean is, it's supposed to carry water through the dam to the main course of the river throughout the year, in all seasons. So it does, it, it, there, should, there cannot be a dam there. If there is a dam, then that means it cannot be run as a run of the river, basically, because I have not come across, I have seen or uh, heard or uh, read about a number of run of the river plants in the country, and none of them are operating like a run of the river power plant. They are operating like peak load power plants. In most cases, they store energy for around 20 to 22 hours and run for either during the morning or even or both. So, so probably around 5% uh, of the time they, they run and remaining time they are storing water. So there is a problem there too. So the question here is, now, with people ask, we require these run of the river plant even to be acted as a peak load power plant in order to meet our peak demand, that's either in the morning or evening hours. I come back to the issue where how a country like uh, the Gulf countries where they don't have any hydropower plant or France where it has around 75% nuclear power plant operating their system, their operating system well. So the managing peak power does not require necessarily a hydropower plant. There are many ways of managing that. So if we take all these issues into account, there is a fundamental thing as a society we need to raise with the uh, planners. How much electricity is real? What sort of electricity generation technologies do we need to adopt? And at what cost to the society? Somebody was talking about, I have been raising this issue many times, about the cost-benefit analysis and the options analysis. In other parts of the world, when there is a project is considered or thought of, the project developer has the, the honors or the responsibility to prove to the society that he has considered various options for uh, meeting that objective, and he has done cost and benefit analysis for each of those options, and he is coming with the project proposal which has least cost and maximum benefit to the society. I don't think we have such a mandate at all in our system here. Because of that, a hydropower plant, just because there is a water drop, somebody is putting up a hydropower plant, somebody can have a lot of access to money, he can put up a coal power plant, and government has decided to go for nuclear power plant just without any of these due diligence process. So unless we start asking these questions, how much electricity is needed? The another, there is another uh, uh, very important thing. The integrated energy policy has uh, projected that with the business as usual scenario, if you allow our electricity demand to go as it is happening now, we have to increase the installed generating capacity of about 180,000 megawatts in 2006 to about 800,000 megawatts by 2031-32. The other projections to 2050 are coming up with projections such as 10 lakhs 
15 lakhs megawatt of power. That is compared to around two and a half lakh megawatt of capacity what we have now. It, it doesn't require a lot of knowledge to imagine the horrors facing our society in this form. So there is a fundamental thing we need to address. Uh, and uh, a basic issue here is our uh, overall operating efficiency of the power sector is one of the worst in the world. This has been acknowledged by our own government and various other bodies like World Bank and other international energy agencies and all that. So why we are not doing about the, anything about that? I know uh, Professor, people like Professor Amuli Kumar Reddy of Indian Institute of Science Bangalore has raised this flag long time ago, way back in 1985, when there was a protest against Kaiga nuclear power plant. So it is not that we don't know. It is not that civil society groups have not taken it up with the go. But the government has not done adequately. The transmission distribution losses are still in the range of 25 to 30 percent. Aggregate commercial and technical losses are still in the range of 35 percent, one of the highest in the world. And some of the technical losses itself, in some of the places like Jammu and Kashmir, some states of Northeast, the losses is in the range of around 60 percent. This, this is not acceptable in a modern society. What it means is 60 percent of the electricity being generated is going to thin air of no use to anybody. So uh, uh, all these issues have been dealt in a detail in a book which was published by CNDP two years ago. The title of the book is called Integrated Power Policy. Uh, I think that's also on the web. I, I strongly urge everybody to have a look at that and start discussing, throwing up those issues and probably pursue a request in whatever way possible that a national level debate is needed as to how much electricity we need, for what purpose, how it can be generated, how whether the, co the cost of that is really much less than the benefit to the society. That's something we have not been able to do and it has been done. Uh, and coming back to this water alone, yeah, yeah, just there is, there is actually, a, you, even countries like US, which are very rich in resources, they have started worrying about the uh, a relationship between the energy and water. The US government has even come up with a major policy paper on energy water nexus. They say energy is needed, is needs water, and water its usage and transportation also require energy. So how do we manage that? It has become a very serious issue. I urge again, we, we, we de dedicate some time, either at this conference or later, to start worrying about uh, the nexus between energy and water. And in that context, I can still I have a lot of data to prove that we don't require the large number of hydropower plants being planned in the country. Thank you very much. Thank you. Can we take some two, three questions, Shamaji, yeah. before you leave? Any questions? And if there is none, please. There are some of the, um, for example, in Ireland and all that, what they are trying to do is there are uh, a natural sort of valleys where not much water is flowing now. They are trying to pump water from sea, ocean, during when there is sunlight, and use that water to run hydro turbines in the uh, time when there is no. But the question here is, uh, without storing water anywhere, you can't, basically we require, as we all know, we require a head. Water has to flow from a higher point to lower point. Has to be in the valley, or could it be in the gorges, or bowls, elsewhere? I, I sorry, I, I didn't understand the difference between gorge and a valley. Are they not one and the same in some large extent? Okay. Gorge may have just a deep uh, depression yeah, yeah. with hardly any water flowing in it. So that's true, but we have a river to, valley. Agreed. But how do we bring water into a gorge? Again, it requires energy in order to pump the water into the gorge if, since it is already there. That's the reason why river valleys have been developed, is it not? Because there is already water flow. If you store the water, they, they decided that due to the head we can generate. But, but you have a valid point. Now there are technology, people are talking about what we have a large water tank in urban areas and all that. Even that much of water flow can really result in some generation of electricity, but that may be very tiny compared to the total amount of energy what we are looking at from hydro energy. But there are very ways. They say that you can pump the uh, waters, ocean water into a high head tank when there is solar. The, one of my friend is doing some research in uh, coastal Karnataka. And that water is allowed to flow back through gravity and generate electricity during uh, night time. That's one of the things. But they are in still experimental stage and may not be such a huge impact uh, in the magnitude what we are talking about.
Uh, I have one small question. Uh, you mentioned uh, the example of France and Gulf countries uh, managing without hydro. Uh, not much of hydro. Not yeah. much of hydro yeah. uh, managing uh, to meet peak loads. Uh, can you uh, 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 tell us how they are trying to do it? More details of that? I, I, I can't say how they are trying to do it in detail. Basically, what happens if you look at the grid, they, uh, especially uh, France, like France and Germany, they are industrial countries. Their variation in load itself is not uh, much compared to our country. Here in India, the, much of the industrial activities, electricity activities will be the, during daytime. Uh, sorry, it will be peak there. But in the evening, much of the lights and other domestic appliances will come on board. Though suddenly our demand goes up. But in those industrialized countries, because of the weather and the type of quality of life and all that, uh, air conditioner may be running during daytime, washing machine may be dying, and they are so much dependent on the electricity. Their energy consumption is more or less flat, you can say. There is not a huge amount of peaks. The second thing here is, if you have large amount of nuclear or thermal alone, each of these generating power plants are designed for a certain amount of uh, additional loads. So if you manage the difference between the peak load and average load to a small extent, even the base load stations can take care of that small increase during peak hours for say half an hour, 45 minutes or two hours. So that depends the difference between the peak load and the base load. If the difference between the two is uh, small, there should not be problem. We don't require any peak load power plants. And they may have some gas power plants which can run uh, very quickly, they can take the load quickly for say within half an hour, half a second or a, uh, say a few minutes. So they seem to be contemplating to match the gap between average load and peak load through some of these uh, peak load stations. Our country trying to do that with the hydropower plant with huge cost to the society. Yeah, yes, please. Uh, yeah, I, I think it's good that we you are trying to touch down on the alternatives part, no? But then uh, when you try to look into the specific reference point, you know, it's also good to refer to other case studies. Like for example, in Germany, we heard that uh, you know it, it's trying to do away with nuclear. You know, you're referring to France uh, as uh, nuclear contributing to the larger power sun, you know. But then countries like uh, Germany, I think uh, they're trying to go to solar. But then we don't know how, how far we can refer to that, you know. But then when we listen to the first speech uh, from Jairam Ramesh on the first day, uh, I think there is a tendency to also conscript within, our, within the mindset of the, you know, those decision makers in terms of looking into the alternatives, you know. Like because there is an over tendency to look into hydro as the ultimate, you know, there is a process to justify that. But then there is also a tendency to, you know, to, uh, to what do you say, uh, to put a mental block, you know, before before going to uh, full-fledged uh, focus on the alternatives, you know. So uh, I think so that is one area that uh, we also need to discuss further, uh, probably at the end of the day tomorrow or towards the end of the day today, uh, looking at the alternatives, you know. And also, like, it's good that you bring up the example of how the energy inefficiency, uh, the underperformance of hydropower project in Northeast, for example, you know, or even like the the, tra the transmission. Loss, for example. So, uh, yeah, it's also good to look into that aspect, you know, how things are underperforming and uh, how things are functioning in efficiency. Yeah, I'm sorry, I did take the example of France. Uh, okay. I'm not advocating nuclear. I was just, that was in specific response to uh, Mr. Dharmadikari's question. Yeah, yeah, what I said was, what I'm trying to say is, we don't require hydropower plant in order to meet the gap between the peak and off-peak demand. That's what I was trying to say. I'm, I'm at, from this podium and very well, I am a very clear advocate that we have to move away from over-reliance on hydropower plant, coal power, any sort of thermal generation including nuclear. That's very clear. I was only drawing that example to show that we don't require hydro. Now I'm coming back to this issue of uh, what you're suggesting. We don't require nuclear. We can't even do that. Even integrated energy policy has very clearly said the uranium reserve available in our country can support only 10,000 megawatt. But the Department of Atomic Energy's pipe dream is to take our total installed nuclear power plant capacity from around 4,500, now, now about 5,000 megawatts, to 250,000 megawatts. 
entirely dependent largely we can say on imported technology and imported material so that is also not possible so nobody can say we can go anywhere near to france in salt capacity that is not the uh, uh, not, not a submission at all so basically he hit on an efficiency efficiency is one of the worst in the world world here my own estimation say that whereas the present gap of uh, demand and uh, supply right now is around 11% officially the deficit the efficiency scope for improvement efficiency sits somewhere around 35% so there is no reason why we have a shortage at all i am very clear on that there is no need all the entire country can have uh, the uh, electricity supply to their essential needs the 30% without electricity now there is no need why they should be without electricity there should be no need why there should be even power cuts yeah i just I'm wondering in uh, Gulf countries, actually, uh, they're managing it basically through diesel power plants, which is not advisable for our place. So we cannot uh, replicate that. But here, uh, as you have already mentioned, there is a huge scope because the uh, maximum power requirement during evening peak hours is for lighting. In the case of Kerala, the difference between daytime uh, requirement and evening requirement is around 1000 megawatts, whereas the actual lighting load during that time would be even uh, around 1000 itself. So there is a huge scope for saving through LED and other things that's there. Then uh, of course we can even uh, go for solar energy with limited backup to meet the uh, peak demands. I can demonstrate that later if anybody is interested. Thank you. Just one thing. No, just a minute, uh, let me complete that. Um, the basic, thanks, uh, Ravi, for that. That is again in reference to what uh, uh, Mr. Dharmadikar asked. I am only talk was talking about how they were managing. We can, we can even in a wildest dream talk about diesel and uh, petrol because 85% of our petroleum products are imported. That's not there. And I agree there is a huge potential within the existing infrastructure, within the existing system to meet all our electricity needs without having to have any of these problems. It is possible. If only we have to look at our lifestyles, our demand side management, energy conservation, and energy efficiency. Yes, sir. See, we are proceeding on the basis of three dogmas. Number one, we require X quantity of energy in 2050, 2025. This needs to be questioned seriously. There's a lot of work done by Amulya Reddy and Girish Sant and so on. It needs to be better understood by people. We do not need the kind of projected figures that we are talking about, number one. Number two, 40% of this has to be hydro. This is another dogma which has to be challenged and disproved. Hydro. Yeah. And, yeah. and the, what, the third one, I have forgotten now what it was. But uh, yeah, the third one is that the hydropower is clean. It is not only not clean, it is the most horrible form of intervention in nature, of all interve human interventions in nature, the worst is a hydropower plant. This is something we need to be understood. Nobody understands this. They talk about green. It's not green. It's not even brown. It is bloody red. I agree, sir. There is absolutely no, there, there is no debate on those three points. There is absolutely no doubt. We all agree with that. That, that's why I have been requesting such forum where people from different walks of life, different states come. We have to, it would have been even more apt if there was an additional session here where we look at individual sectoral approach to the water. If we had done that, probably these things would have come to the fore. I agree uh, with that. Yes, please. Sir, I just uh, have a, just, just uh, very small. Sir, when you are talking about the largest scenario of India, you're saying there's no need of high projects. Fine, that's what I say. There is no need for so many hydro so additional many. projects. Yeah, additional projects. Okay. <laughs> so I, I have no problem if many of the existing plants also decommissioned. It's possible. Yeah. So, uh, so even if you are talking about the like no more hydro project projects, but the increase is uh, like the demand is increasing. Yeah. That's what, uh, what we agree. And there is no rail connectivity. You cannot say we can depend on coal power plant or even gas something like that. Not Solar is option. Yeah. Solar is option. Of course, option like he said. So certainly the demand is the driver force there. So there is a demand of the hydro projects. Don't you think that? 
No, there is no. See, let, let's understand. There is no demand for hydro or nuclear or power. You Energy demand light. is there. No, no. So, you are I. What we want is light. We want services from the electricity, pumping, watering, transport, and all. How does it matter whether it comes from hydro or nuclear or diesel or uh, biomass? So we have to look at that technology which can bring those services. We are not even looking for electricity. We are looking for those services at the lowest cost to the society. If you start doing that, as uh, Dr. I mean, um, uh, Mr. Ramaswamy has said, things would be fair. We are not looking at that. We are looking for so much of energy. So much of energy is required. What we are looking for is only services, lighting and the things. If we can manage that, things would be all right. The, the other problem is that we are not having a holistic look, as you are suggesting. We are not looking at that as well as we are not looking at the holistic approach. Things can never fall into place. That's where such conferences come into picture. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you.